been involved in uh, Japanese hand tools and Japanese carpentry for uh, 35 or so years, 40 years, something like that. When I was a young teen, I worked a little bit for a neighbor who owned a antique shop. Um, so I did, you know, refinishing and stuff like that from a young age, and I was always building something. Uh, working with my hands has uh, given me a pretty good life. Mm -hmm. um, raised family, you can actually, you know, support a family by working with your hands. Mm -hmm. Nothing, nothing yeah. wrong with it. And as far as younger people who are starting to go down a similar path, or you know, I would say, you know, to anyone with uh, any kind of interest in um, in a craft. Uh, to certainly pursue it and uh, you know people in general are going to be good about what they're passionate about so um, you know I encourage uh, young people to, to try to find their their you know circle of people and it's really nice to see new people coming along younger people coming along that's really inspiring and then just gathering together with groups of people like this you tend to meet and broaden your your circle Japanese influence came like as being a kid in that era, you know, if you were kind of into techie things, inevitably you'd be into video games and, you know, there's a little Japanese influence there and anime and I don't know where it came from, but always into Japanese culture from an early age mm. and building stuff as you, as those things meld, you see the Japanese woodworking and the, the level of quality and craft. And then sort of, sort of the spiritual side of it being like, you know, same kind of influences, like sort of tech focused makes you a little less spiritual, a little more atheistic. And it's mm. like the, you derive spiritual satisfaction from nature and mm. mountains and being outside. And it's like, that's not religious, but it's, you know, just so peace. What is one piece of advice you would impart to those who are just starting out on this journey or maybe sort of at the intermediate level and looking to really build this out. So you just gotta constantly keep doing things, ignore the internet, work, 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 experiment, fail, 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 fail. All these amazing guys that are here have just made more mistakes than all of us and figured out how to fix them. I mean, and every one of them will point to a piece of work that people think is amazing and be like, oh, I messed it up there, I messed it up there, I messed it up there. Everybody makes mistakes. And you can't be afraid of the failure and prevent it from experience all the other joys of the craft. You just gotta do it and ignore the judgment. This is my first exposure to the community and I'm just blown away by how kind and, and generous people are with their time. So yeah, that's what it's all about. One of the biggest challenges is quite simply just economic. How do you do this work quickly enough to to make a decent living at it, mm -hmm. but not so quick that it becomes tedious and burdensome. Mm -hmm. So becoming really efficient is something I'm trying to, always trying to improve. Okay. And, um, so that I can charge the right price um, and enjoy working. The same time. Are you still able to maintain sort of that mindful, meditative approach while being efficient? When things go well. Okay. Get yeah. into the flow state. The flow state. Okay. Ha yeah. And that's hard to do. Yeah. Especially when you have, if you're working on a large project with a lot of different moving parts, including people, schedules, mm -hmm. budgets and a thousand pieces of wood or whatever, <laughs> yeah. seemingly. Um, it takes 
a lot of mental organization. Working that stuff out, that's a part of the discipline. Mm -hmm. uh, keeping really organized, keeping your head organized, keeping things in perspective too. Okay. Yeah. With the project. Yeah. A lot of your a lot of the stuff you're really thinking about details, but you you have to keep the big picture in mind and say Here's what we're doing. Mm. This is the end goal. It's this amazing structure. Yeah. This one little joint isn't going to affect. Mm. It's not going to radically alter the. It's kind of like a CEO project. mindset of looking at yeah. the whole spectrum rather than cu getting caught up on the granularity. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Be better way to put it. Yeah. Two things. Just put in a hundred thousand hours. That's the most important thing, is to work. Try to get work with other people who are way more advanced than you, yeah. and just work. It, it's keeping that big picture in focus because it's easy to get a real tunnel vision about chopping mortises and mm -hmm. making the perfect this or that. That's all good, that's all necessary, but for me, the, the end, product of, a, of an amazing piece of furniture or an amazing dwelling place, whether that's a tea house or even a transitional dwelling place like a Japanese gate that takes you across the threshold into an amazing and very unique place. It, it's that those, those larger objects uh, are really important to be mindful of. It's not just tiny little joints. Mm. The perfect edge on your chisel. Yeah. That's those are means to an end. Right. Yeah. I'm starting to turn my focus to legacy, mm. um, and in my case, uh, it turns out I really enjoy teaching. Mm -hmm. The preservation and passing on of knowledge uh, and also the, the education at large. Mm. As a young man I was very drawn to the idea of being able to do everything and uh, after a few years of apprenticeship uh, that changed a lot to um, uh, all of a sudden I start well over time but at one point I started realizing oh I am now much more interested in getting better at what I do and saving money to buy a small boat made by somebody who's had the same focus as I've had in my work and that that boat would be, that boat would be great and meaningful uh, versus the value of being able to say, I built this boat. Yeah. So that shifted, that sort of took care of that focus issue. I, I surrendered to like, all right, I will not do so many different things, um, but I'm enjoying going deeper and deeper in this one mm. aspect of the woodworking. Time management actually mm. is really what it comes down to. Persistency in this line of work is really key. The caveat that I would add is that there is a difference between persistency and stubbornness. And um, it's not always made, uh, but I would advise to try to make the difference because I've, I've made myself suffer a lot by being stubborn and uh, I've, I've grown to understand the difference in the value of being persistent. There's a much more, there's much more self-love in persistency and uh, I think it's a much more graceful way to move forward. If I could tell myself, you know, 20 years ago, I might not have listened to myself, obviously, but... <laughs> the bad might have convinced your younger self. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Thank you.
Japanese type work, I got into it after meeting a fellow named Rue Amagasu. And uh, Rue worked at a place called Willard Brothers. He had his own shop there. And he, uh, he made Nakashima style furniture. He was George Nakashima's grandson. And uh, when I walked in and sold that furniture and talked to Rue, uh, I was struck by the aesthetic of it. It's a pursuit of purpose. I use this work to pursue a purpose in life. The, the big challenge is uh, finding, finding people to learn from. As you pursue more things, run into situations where you may need to overcome a obstacle, and you, um, at each one of those, typically want to find somebody who's capable of teaching you something about whatever it is you're dealing with. Like, uh, in my pursuits, I've had to restore machinery, so you have to find somebody who's capable of doing that gives you a little bit of guidance. I guess that's the, the main challenge. There's absolutely no substitute for putting time into it. So if you're going to do this work, um, I feel like the people who I know who pursue it and continue pursuing it and become good at it are those who are willing to put a lot of time into it. The saying that the teacher presents himself as the student is ready, that tends to come from putting in a lot of hard work. If you're willing, somebody will recognize that and they, they come and they teach you. I'd say narrow your focus, do, do one thing well, and then expand from that.